So, um, this isn't a normal episode of For a Few Dice More, obviously, but I thought it'd be fun to do some, like, get-to-know-the-cast interviews. So, we're gonna do that, we're starting off today with Melanie. So, we're just gonna ask a couple questions here to get to know ya. Audience, get to know ya. Um, I guess let's jump right into it. Okay, let's do it. So, how were you introduced to tabletop role-playing games and like kind of how long have you been been after it uh cumulatively not very long but i was introduced back in 2007 2008 um my best friend back in my hometown her and her boyfriend slash fiance slash husband in that order believe it or not Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually the uh, they used to go play and their games usually were overnight so i would uh dog sit for them because they had a lot of dogs so they'd blast off to play and i'd crash at their place and then um my friend's work shifted her to overnights and so she couldn't go play and so i tagged along as a sub only I made decisions for her character that she didn't appreciate. <laughs> and um, the rest of the folks in the group decided they would just let me roll a character. So rolled totally kick-ass character. I was very excited to play. And then they proceeded to stop playing. Aww. So yeah, a long hiatus after that because I didn't know anybody who played. Moved to Arkansas. Tried to start a couple games over the past couple years with some friends, and they all kind of petered out for one reason or another. And partly it's just people are spread out, and people have a million different schedules. And some of us work well, worked retail, so there was no consistency to our schedules, and it was just really difficult to bring together. So, yeah, that's how I was introduced to it. It's a classic DD game, and uh, so yeah, probably cumulatively, I've played like. 12 whole hours of D&D, <laughs> but I've read a lot about uh, it, and I've enjoyed the memes about it. Um, so what was that first character you, you had oh, made? dude, do I even remember that? I don't remember. No, I don't, remember. No, right, I don't even fair. remember the name. You just remember it was totally kick-ass. It was totally kick-ass, because every single time I landed a role, everybody was like, oh my god, oh my god, you're going to be so strong, and I was feeling pretty good about myself. Yeah. Then, I mean, I didn't know anything about D&D at that point, so... Yeah, and it's probably like 3.5 or something. Probably. Real was, grindy. I mean, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go, going from that, what is your favorite like race, either fantasy, sci-fi, whatever, um, like race class combo? Well, up until our Deadlands campaign, I've only played fantasy. So um, I super enjoy half-elves. They've got cool traits, a lot of flexibility. And um, I generally like some kind of kick-ass class, fighter, ranger, something that lets me punch and stab and shoot things. Um, my last character before our standard D&D campaign was a half-elf paladin. And that was pretty cool for the whole, like, two and a half sessions we played. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and then now I'm a, a goliath fighter because i like to punch things punch them punch them <laughs> um so with that paladin you had made do you remember did you have any obviously the campaign didn't go that long at all but did you have any like development towards it like what dd or um oh yeah like i had it all lined up and i still have my notebook for it actually i had I had a whole whole book and it was color coordinated and i had all of my stuff laid out in it and it was really cool uh her name was idrin and she was a follower of oh, i don't remember how to pronounce it but one of the sea deities mm -hmm. because uh after her husband was murdered she yeeted herself out to an island and lived as a hermit for a while where she the deity or your character my character <laughs> my character's husband was murdered she yeeted herself out to an island where she found guidance from said sea deity and so then she became a follower of him and returned to the mainland to pursue justice in the name of her deity. 
Yes. As paladins pursuing, do. <laughs> pursuing justice on land for the sea <laughs> deity. Hey, you know, he was there for her when nobody else was. <laughs> um, and it gives him reach where he doesn't normally have reach. That's like, fair. That's fair. Okay, well, that kind of leads into this next one. How much of yourself do you put into your characters? Um, Probably with the first couple characters I almost got to play, there was more of Shigeru. myself. <laughs> um, But I think with my last few characters, I've gotten better at creating personalities that I wouldn't necessarily be in real life, if that makes sense. Um, but that being said, it is still really difficult for me to just engage in unjustified violence in gameplay. Mm -hmm. So I struggle with that. All right. So you, you're kind of the opposite of Carly. Where yes. She's like hack and slash. Oh, let's God. get after it. We fight all the time. Cause like even in video games, I just can't. Like mm -hmm. I feel bad when I have to hunt in Breath of the Wild. I'm like, I'm so sorry, you beautiful fox, but I need to eat you. And she's like, Yes, death to all creatures. And I just um I can't. It hurts yeah. me. My sad weenie soul. Poor thing. Um what would it take for you to make a pact with like a warlock patron? In game or in real life? Yes. God damn it. <laughs> uh, in Deadlands or in our normal campaign? Yes. God damn it. <laughs> you can skip normal campaigns. Since okay, people good. People listening aren't going to know yet. You'd probably anyway. just punch them in the face and tell them they were awful. Um, in our Deadlands campaign, probably like money um lots of nice fancy things a whole room of pocket trees would be pretty cool in a fancy house in a pleasant climate uh, plenty of dreamy people to wait on her um some other things that i can't talk about yet because that part of her story hasn't come up yet so probably so, that for miss fanny bottoms yeah. god i Just love her She's superb. She's a good girl. IRL. That's even harder. I want so many things. <laughs> uh, a degree, but also all of the knowledge that I would have gained getting said degree, but like without the work, that'd be cool. Just put put the knowledge in my head. Mm -hmm. Um, sick ass job related to that. Um, best selling author guaranteed would be pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. Uh, all the my hero everything in my life just mm -hmm. i could just be like yeah i want that and then i could have it then, without then like it is yours yeah. Yeah. yeah um unlimited travel like i would just be like oh i feel like going to rome today and just go to rome and it like, so like a teleport kind of situation well or? yeah but like no financial commitment <laughs> right yeah. i wouldn't have to take time off of a job and save yeah. up for it yeah. and i could just be like yeah this is what i want to do today and then i would do that um yeah i feel like i feel like if i could get all of that in a tidy little bundle i would sell my soul yeah yeah that makes sense yeah interesting to know I may not use that Melanie's against heart. any characters or anything at all. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I guess this one kind of feeds into that. If you could remove all barriers or constraints, what project would you want to be able to do? And would you want to be like exclusively known for that project? Or would it be like a, like kind of the thing that get your foot in the door per se is there anything is basically is there anything you're working on that <laughs> either, either passively because obviously busy with school or i want to be a with. published author yeah like, that's my dream i want to i want to write stories and i want publishers to be like ah oh, yes this is a person that we want to have in print that we're willing to invest in and then i want people to buy that book <laughs> uh, and have it be successful and ideally, in my dream of dreams, somebody somewhere would make fan art of, of my your, book. Of your 
That's like the dream right there. That's when you've made it is when people who don't know you like your shit enough to create their own shit about your shit. Yeah, that makes total sense. <gasps> yeah, so if I if I had no barriers, then I mean, yeah, I would literally just spend my time writing. I have like, I don't know, five active projects that I kind of flip between very, very periodically because I'm in school. But mm-hmm. like, no barriers. I wouldn't have to commit time to school. I wouldn't have bills to pay. I wouldn't have external commitments to meet. And so then I could just devote myself to my passion. Yeah, that's, what that's I awesome. Do. And yeah, I would love to be known as a very successful published author. That would be ideal. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, so like what kind of things do you write? Are you kind of all over the place or do you like write fiction? What do you... Uh, fiction, do you... I have... I mean, obviously papers for school have introduced me to the idea of publishing like literary criticism and stuff and i think that'd be pretty neat to explore because i really enjoy that but yeah uh fiction is my my bread and butter i have um, my fantasy manuscript that actually quit working on earlier this year um i have a post-apocalyptic sci-fi story that i've been half-heartedly pecking at for a while now that i'm head over heels in love with i have Mm. another like borderline contemporary fantasy story that I've been teasing at for a while. I have, uh, I don't know if it technically counts as historical, but it's like set in the early 50s. Mm. America and the well, like New York City in the early 50s. So mm. Historical from our so perspective, like, but not like maybe Victorian. Like, no, no, know, it's not. Little, it's little not more. noir. Not? <laughs> it's just not the right vibe for what it is. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I have all these these floating around in notebooks in my room that I just kind of, when I'm feeling inspired, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the perfect moment for this. And then I'll scribble it down. But nothing really fully developed or drawn out except for that fantasy manuscript that I'm not working on anymore. Yeah. So. So that was something I was pretty interested to learn. You do a lot of your writing like analog style like pen and paper. Yeah, uh it's just how my brain works. I was diagnosed with dyslexia when I was in first grade. Mm-hmm. And I went through a lot of writing therapy to work on correcting parts of that which more or less was effective. Um I still struggle with it occasionally. And when I get tired, it gets worse. But I think that that relates to how I interact with a computer. So I can better interpret my thoughts through my own handwriting versus through a keyboard. I struggle more to to get that connection going. So yeah, mm-hmm. I, I write everything longhand with a pencil in a notebook right. and then type it up. I got you. Yeah. It was pretty cool, if you ask me. It's time-consuming as well. Oh, I, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Just time to do the work twice. Yeah. I mean, it's a good editing opportunity, but yeah, it's very time-consuming. Yeah. Um, all right, then finally, let's do uh, do the old two truths and a lie. And then whenever I do these little quick shot interviews with the rest of the cast, we'll kind of maybe I'll sit around one time and reveal what they were and... Have a little guessing game. Two truths and a lie. So I was struggling with this one because the truths are easy. The lie is hard. I'm bad at lying. Back around the time that I was introduced to Dungeons and Dragons, I worked as a highway construction person. One time I went to a bar in Reno with one of my girlfriends and we walked in the guy on stage jumped off of the stage and motorboated me. Uh, so even though I lived in Nevada for 20 some odd years, I never actually went to Vegas. Awesome. There you go. So anyway, thanks for taking the time, Melanie. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get the next episode of the Halloween special out to y'all shortly. Wednesday. Probably not Wednesday. Really? Yeah, I don't think I'll have enough because I work Tuesday and Wednesday. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, so like next Monday. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. I might, I might get it done by Saturday if I work like all day Friday. We're just going to extend Halloween into Thanksgiving. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's all the same. In fact, just Halloween special year round. <gasps> yes. 
<laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. Um, I hope y'all have a good time. Let Sucking us know what you butts. think. That too. <laughs> All right. See y'all later.